Alrighty, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the weekly outlook. A um, couple things. I know it's not on YouTube. For some reason, the new Mac update, it's not seen, it doesn't seem to be compatible with the uh, OBS software that I stream on. So that's why I'm doing it on Zoom today. Uh, but I'll get it fixed. I'll figure it out, see if um, there's a solution before next week so I can continue streaming on YouTube live because I love doing it on there because we're able to reach new people that have never found me before. But yeah, and then um, also I tr I'm really trying to do these weekly outlooks every single week. You know, I've been doing them just about every single week for the past three years, but just wanna let you guys know the past couple of weeks of my life have been a little bit busy outside of trading. So that's why um, they've been like every other week for the past month. So I'm going to try to get back to doing these every single week for you guys and trying to do, do them on Sundays. Also yesterday, I was also really busy, um, just juggling a lot the past couple of weeks, but it's good. It's a good busy. So, um, but I'm excited for this week, week, this week's weekly outlook. And if you guys have been paying attention to what I've been posting in the uh, telegram or if you're a student posting in my in my discord channel there's been a ton of money being made i have a lot of different setups to go over today um and i there is seriously a lot of money to be made this week okay and this if you didn't i know i gave out a ton of setups last week a ton of um really good trades last week um i made a ton of money last week in the market and, I, and if you didn't catch any of that from last week, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity this week and a lot of opportunity in the coming weeks to make some serious money before the end of the year. Okay, so quarter four just started a couple weeks ago, beginning of this month, guys, and we want to capitalize on it because as we get to the end of quarter four, right, as we get to December, the markets are really going to wind down. You know, me personally, the last two two-ish weeks of the year, I don't do any trading whatsoever. So um, yeah, uh, let's jump into things today. So before I just give you guys all the goodies and jump into everything, let me just look at the economic calendar very quickly. Um, there's really only two days that you need to worry about this week, and that is tomorrow, Tuesday, okay, and Thursday, okay? So tomorrow, there is a, there's actually a Brexit vote. Okay. There's a Brexit vote tomorrow. So that's going to be huge, huge day for the pound. I mean, it's already been big for the pound. If you guys have not been following the pound, like specifically the pound dollar has gone up about six or 700 pips in the past two weeks. I think pound yen in the past two weeks has gone up a thousand pips. So there has been some serious gains on pound yen and pound dollar, we can see that there's been some really big spikes recently. Um, I would probably stay out of the market. I'd probably stay away from the pound until after the vote. And then um, not a whole lot going on on Wednesday. Thursday is really big for the Eurozone, okay? We have a ton of PMIs early um, Thursday morning if, you, if you're in North America. And then a few hours after all of those PMIs, we're going to have an ECB press conference, but more importantly, the main refinancing rate, right? There, the interest rate decision and a monetary policy statement accompanying that is coming out Thursday. So big, big day, big week for Europe, right? We've got the UK tomorrow, and then we've got um, just the greater Europe Eurozone on news on Thursday. Okay. So that's the boring stuff out of the way. Just know that Tuesday is going to be a busy day. Wednesday is going to be pretty light. Thursday is going to be another busy day. Friday is going to be pretty light. And then we have daylight changing or daylight savings changing on Saturday. So um, I'm going to continue to do the weekly outlooks at the same time, 8 p.m. Eastern. So that just means, well, for most of you guys, if, you, if you're in North America or other places, that doesn't change. But for me being in Arizona, that'll change like the one hour difference for me. Okay. But let's get into the stuff. So get into the good stuff. So as a preliminary, um, as a preliminary, just kind of a recap before we jump into things. Okay, I want to kind of go over the pairs that I went over yesterday. I mean, not not yesterday, last week. And if you guys are simply in Telegram, all you had to do was be in Telegram. Make sure you have notifications turned on, and that's really one big thing 
guys, I know that you're probably in like 50 different Telegram groups, so you have notifications turned off. I really urge you and, and challenge you to really be strict about who you follow and, you know, these quote unquote gurus, make sure they have a track record. Like literally guys, I have a live and I'm not trying to brag or boast or sound arrogant, but if you're, if the person that you're following cannot just on the spot, pull up a MyFX book, that's sufficiently decent. Not just like a two week MyFX book or a one month MyFX book. We're talking six months, one year, two year MyFX book. If they don't have something like that, why are you following them? Right? Why are you following them? Anybody can give out a good trade, right? But we're talking about consistency over time. Okay. Consistency over time. So, um, yeah, if you're following the telegram, these were a couple of the setups that I gave out last week. So me personally, and, and, and I'm going to go over these because there's more money to be made on these setups. Okay. But, um, I personally, this is a trade that I took last week. You can check my, my FX book on my past trades. And you can also, I mean, if you're one of my students, you know that this is one of the trades that I called out last week. This is the trade that we placed. And I gave out a little bit of this for free in Telegram. I posted this setup when price was right here on this bull flag on the hour. And I drew an arrow that looks like this. You guys can go and look at the post. It's right there in Telegram publicly. And my target was, and I actually wrote 68.89. I said that that was my target. And that was actually my take profit for my trade. And I said that that would be hit. So we see a couple pips miss, you know, it, it's missing off by like eight or s seven or eight pips, but overall this move happened. So easy money on AUD USD. If you were just there and paying attention, I also posted and I'm, I'm going to get to what I, what I think is going to happen guys. Just bear with me. Um, let me, sorry. Let me, I forgot I'm using zoom for this so I can actually just, Use my normal marker. I don't need to use the trading view. Okay, let me get my normal marker out. Okay. Um, so that was AUD USD. I posted that in Telegram for free for you guys. And I also posted USD CAD. Um, I posted this bear flag on USD CAD. And I said USD CAD would continue going to my long term target of 129, which I've been preaching for a really long time. And um, we see it, you know, that's exactly what happened. Look at like the hourly, right? It's just gone straight down from where I posted. And then, so let's, let's just kind of start off with, with, you know, to move into forward analysis. Just also just to recap, let's just go with the dollar index. Okay. So I posted this chart of the weekly and I really want you guys to pay attention to this because this is important. Okay. The dollar index has been an 18 month uptrend. Okay. I have it outlined right here. Matter of fact, now that you guys have seen that, I'm going to delete that. An 18 month uptrend that we've been on on the dollar index. And I posted this in Telegram last week and I said, Will we finally break this channel? Can a dovish Fed be enough? And I think, I think that we are. I think that a dovish Fed can be enough, okay? From both a fundamental standpoint and a technical standpoint, the dollar index is looking weak. And so, just to cut to the chase, you know, we're only 12 minutes in. I'm going to get a little, little bit deeper on some of these pairs, but for some of you guys that might not want to stick around the whole time, if you just want my, my just short and to the point analysis, I am short on the US dollar. Okay. So that means I'm looking for Euro USD buys, looking for AUD USD buys, looking for NZD USD buys, looking for USD CAD sells, especially USD CAD sells. Okay. Because I think USD CAD is just about to start a really big downtrend, okay, for a couple hundred pips. Um, and I mean, we've seen every other pair starting to climb. So, and I'm not bandwagoning this, by the way, you know, I'm not like jumping onto this, what like now that it's just at these highs, I have been calling this and I mean, my buy on AUD USD last week proves it. So I'm actually out of this trade just as a recap. If you guys are following me on, on Instagram, you'll actually see I closed this trade on Friday. Um, I closed it before the market open or before the market closed. So I'm actually out of this trade. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually trying something out, something new out. I think I'm going to keep my trades like this, like on the charts, just to be transparent. So like when, you know, I have tons of trades, I can go back and see like every trade that I took. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try keeping that on the, on the charts for now. Um, but yeah, and NZD USD was also a clean setup. I mean, 
when I took AUD USD, it was really just, um, you know, which one was the better trade. It, I decided to take AUD USD, but obviously, and I, I mean, most of you guys should know this. And if you don't know this, you need to know this that AUD USD and NZD USD have a positive correlation to each other. So AUD USD goes up, NZD USD goes up. So we had this really nice inverted head and shoulders on NZD USD. So really clean price action last week. Like I'm telling you guys, you really missed out last week if you didn't make any money. If you if you didn't, yeah, I mean, it was just really, really clean price action. USD CAD also. I'm, so I'm looking at getting into USD CAD this week also. Um, I'd like to have, I'm definitely not looking at just selling at these lows. Um, I really like to wait for some sort of a correction. You know, maybe we're going to make a bear flag somewhere around these lows. And that's going to be a bearish continuation pattern for me. If that does happen, or maybe will correct a little bit higher. I'll have to see how price action develops, but overall looking for um, continuation to the downside on USD CAD. Okay, my targets on 129 are still valid and that's 180 pips from where we are right now. And that's really not that far. Look at this on the weekly, that's only to right here, right? 180 pips is all the way, is, is down to right there. But look, I think I think USD CAD is going to drop, do something like that over the coming weeks, especially if the Fed come October thirtieth when we do when we do have the Fed meeting again and they do continue the easing cycle and cut by another twenty five basis points. We're going to see more USD weakness, just as we've started to see. Um, you know, we've really started to see the bears start to test the downside, especially this past week. So the easing is really starting to like show in terms of price action, right? And that's one thing that um, I think is a really good example, like a per like the epitome of the markets, right? Like we know that the Fed has been easing, right? So that the U.S. dollar should be getting weak, right? But you don't really like see it initially, but until it is already starting to happen. I mean, I've been expecting it to happen because I see, I know what to look at. But if you don't know what to look at you might just now, like that's what I'm trying to say. I, I know that just this week, a lot of people are just now beginning to have a bearish bias on the US dollar because of where the weekly candle closed and where it is in terms of this channel. But at these highs, I know a lot of people were bullish and I was still giving it some room to come to the, to the, to the downside. And that's why I bought AUD USD, right? I wouldn't buy AUD USD if I thought the dollar was going to go up, right? The whole reason I buy AUD USD is because I'm, I'm shorting the dollar, right? I'm picking the pair that fits. It. That's that's how I trade, guys. I mean, I mean, obviously, like it was a lot deeper than that, but just in general, that's like the way I trade, right? If let's say I want to look, if I'm looking at the dollar index and I think that the dollar is going to strengthen or I think the dollar is going to weaken, I'm going to find the pair at for that for that specific instance, you know, that week, that month, whatever that fits the best to either buy the US dollar or short the US dollar. And it's not always gonna be the same pair. Sometimes it's gonna be Euro USD, sometimes it's gonna be USD CAD, sometimes it's gonna be AUD USD. Depends on what the fundamentals are doing with Euro and AUD and USD CAD. And the whole reason for AUD USD is last week, so the RBA got together and right after we took this trade, um, where was this? Uh, so, well, there was actually a couple of things. So last week on Wednesday, there was multiple things. So last Wednesday, there was some labor reports that came out for the Australian dollar and the employment change didn't, didn't move much, but the um, un unemployment rate dropped. So that was better than expected. And then the next day, so there's not a number for this, but if you guys go back and you, and you look at whatever news source you get your news from and you look at what Governor Lowe said, who is the head of the RBA, Central Bank of, of Australia. He had a, a like a, 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 a hawkish, which is good, um, outlook on Australia. Okay, he was saying some good things in the Australian dollar. So there was the fundamentals that backed up um, the reason. Oh, and then also there was the, the meeting minutes last week. At the beginning of last week, there was the meeting minutes that came out for the Australian dollar. And the meeting minutes also reiterated, it, it talked about that they were okay with um, keeping interest rates where they were, that they were not too um, eager to continue the easing cycle, right? Which is overall good for the, the Australian dollar. And that's why I chose 
the Australian dollar to buy last week, right? Exactly what I'm saying. I picked up the pair of the currency that at the time fits the best for what I'm trying to trade. Okay. Um, but yeah, okay. I mean, I, I hope I'm I hope I'm being clear. I that that this week, if you're trying to make some money, in my opinion, I think the best opportunity is going to be looking for shorting the U.S. dollar to continue looking for shorts. Okay, because guys. If we break this channel, which I think is very possible with this further easing coming up, okay? Again, this channel has been here for a very long time. If we break this channel, then it's gonna be all the way down here for the dollar, okay? At least, at least back down to 93.20 for the dollar, okay? Most likely, we're gonna start a pretty strong downtrend on the dollar, okay? Because the dollar overall has this weak, it, it, it doesn't have this true strength. The only reason it has this false strength right now is because if you look at every other central bank in the world, out of all the major central banks, so over here, has the highest, um, well, it's actually about to have um, tied interest rates with Canada come October 30th. So we'll see, you know, that's, that's another reason why the U.S. dollar, I think the U.S. dollar is going to continue to to devalue because now there's going to be competition for what central bank has the highest interest rate, right? Because technically Canada is going to have a higher interest rate because for us, you know, it, you, a lot of people, you know, just kind of ignore sometimes that less than sign that actually means. So right now the interest rates in the U S is actually not 2%. It's 1.75%. It's between 1.75% and 2%, right? And when, and when they drop it another 25 basis points, in about a week here, they're going to be dropping it to between one and a half percent and 1.75 percent. That's why it says less than two percent. So when we're between less, when we're between one and a half percent and 1.75 percent, that's a floating um, overnight rate that's actually can potentially be lower than the rate, uh, depending on the day, than Canada. Okay, so should be interesting. You know, that's going to create some competition, and that's that may create us. I mean, that I don't think that may. I think that is going to create a sell-off on the U.S. dollar from investors just wanting, just moving their money over to the Canadian dollar and in other currencies. Um, you know, there's so much going on right now. We also have trade wars going on, uh, so we're seeing just in general things like fiat currency weakening and uh, in, in commodity strength thing. Right, we're seeing. Uh, gold stuck in this bullish wedge, you know, just to speak on gold very quickly here. Here's my, here's my outlook on gold, right? I mean, it's pretty simple, right? We're, we're in this wedge. Okay. We've made a, a, a very consistent series of lower highs and lower lows in this since like August and it hasn't really moved, right? It had a lot of volatility. Um, you know, I'm not trying to like brag or be arrogant, but just if you have been following me since the very beginning of this year, 10 months ago at the beginning of this year, actually end of last year, beginning of this year, um, when gold was all the way down in this area, I said that we would break the multi-year highs, which at the time was about 1375. And we are, you know, you can see we are way above there now. We're over a hundred dollars past at one point, almost two hundred dollars past thirteen seventy five, right? And I am still bullish on gold overall. Okay, my long term outlook is bullish on gold. Okay, I think pretty much I'll, I'll just I'll just be really clear with you guys. I'll draw it like this is what I think gold is going to do. It's probably going to do something like this. Maybe stay in this wedge for a little bit longer, but overall, it's going to do something like that. Okay, I think downside is limited. Upside is is there's plenty of upside to be had with gold, okay? And that's that's especially, I mean, we, we do need, there is a stipulation with that, right? And my invalidation is really with the dollar, with the dollar index. I really need the dollar index. for. And I mean, it's not like I need it. It's not like I have like these long-term trades running and I need it to happen, right? It's just like for me to, for my bias to be valid, I need the dollar index to break this support. And I need, um, you know, that, that would be the catalyst to push gold higher, right? But, you know, what's interesting is even though the dollar has continued to trend up higher this year, gold has also picked up its strength. So I'm not too super, even super wor too worried about 
really what happens with the dollar index. Even if the dollar index did decide to stay in this channel, where we would probably see gold continue to rise, right? Unless something you know crazy develops with the trade wars, you know. But but a lot of what is fueling um, the gold strength right now is the trade wars. Okay. Jacob and the never ending Brexit. Yeah. I mean, I called it. It's so, I mean, I, I've, I've been calling it like guys, I don't, I don't think there's going to be a Brexit deal that happens. You know, even this past week, there was so much hoopla. If you want to, I think that's a word. That's a real word. Hoopla means like craziness, right? Hoopla about um, there being a possible deal, right? Boris Johnson is being super optimistic. And then all of a sudden this, this weekend, it's like, nope, not going to happen right? So uh, got another vote tomorrow. We're just going to see what happens. But chances are Brexit isn't going to happen. And I'm telling you guys, be careful with the pound, right? Just be careful with the pound. I get like, there's a lot of volatility. Volatility is good, right? We, we like volatility, but um, just be careful, right? I mean, there, there's been some really big moves already, right? Like I just said, pound, pound dollar, in the past two weeks, 700 pips. Pound yen in the past two weeks, 1,000 pips. Crazy moves that have already happened. If you didn't, if you didn't capitalize on the moves yet, I just kind of move, move, for, move forward, okay? Uh, Jacob in the chat saying, no deal equals Europe recession, global weakness. Well, I mean, a lot of different countries in Europe are already – basically in a recession look at germany look at italy you know i mean by definition maybe not uh re, you know reported as a recession but basically a recession look at how their economy is doing giovanni bullish i'm assuming you're talking about pound well not so much i mean if 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 we start to get a, a no deal if this no deal comes out i mean especially tomorrow if, if no deal comes through uh i wouldn't be so bullish on the pound right that could just send the pound back down because keep in mind guys the whole reason giovanni that the reason the pound has gone up so violently the past two weeks is because there it's the fundamentals i mean you could say it's the technicals i mean there's technicals on both sides yeah there's like this channel and stuff that breaks but really it's the fundamentals right like don't ever forget guys that the technicals is is really the the overall technicals is really just like a a visual representation of what's happening in the world fundamentally and what's been happening fundamentally the past two weeks is, a bit, is there's been a lot of optimism optimism behind brexit actually coming through right specifically boris johnson having a lot of optimism right the, the prime minister the new prime minister of the uk so i'd be careful because the same you know the same way pound yen has gone up a thousand pips in two weeks i wouldn't be surprised you know maybe not like a full thousand pips back down but if there's like a no deal Brexit, if there's like a heart, like a, a no deal, then it's possible that Brexit could just like in, within like a couple of days, like poof, just drop like hundreds of pips. So I'm not really trying to play around with that. I, I prefer the volatility, more volatility that I can, tr can control something like AUD USD. Okay. And AUD USD, I think will continue moving up higher. All right. So the next level for AUD USD to take out is going to be this uh the the stops that we're gonna have just above this area from people that have been short all right long term short on AUD USD so we will move higher on AUD USD okay we're gonna get we'll get up to 60 uh, 69 exactly at least so that's like another that's only another like 30 pips from where we are but if we break that level we should continue up higher also okay that US dollar weakness gold going higher euro USD going higher NZD USD going higher but I, I would really expect on AUD USD first, probably a correction. Okay. Probably a correction and then going up. Okay. So I would not buy AUD, AUD USD at these highs. Okay. The same reason why I got out at the end of last week, because I think that there's going to be a correction first, probably a decent size correction, probably like at least 50% of this most recent swing that we saw at the end of last week and then moving up higher. Okay. Maybe not quite 50%, but some sort of correction, retracement, and then moving up higher. Uh, Jacob said, but if the big countries like Germany enter a recession because of a, of a no-deal Brexit, that could hurt us with the Dow floating without a trade deal. 
Um, I worry about a U.S. recession in six, eight months. Yeah, I mean, the, I, the U.S. also is on a brink of recession also. I mean, there's been technical, I mean, there's been indicators that have actually pointed at signs of an early recession multiple times this year, twice this year, when, we see, when we've seen the Dow drop um, a significant amount in, in a day, right? If we go look at the, the Dow very quickly. Right, we can see, uh, was it here? Um, so here at the beginning of the year, or at the end of last year, beginning of this year, or it, was, it was at the very, very end of 2018. And then also in May and August, a couple of times. So right? I mean, it seems like anytime there's a, there's like a, almost a, those have been like 2% lost days, 1% lost days. Yeah, bond inversions too, right? We see the bond yields being inverted. That's not, I mean, those are, that alone is a recession indicator, right? I mean, when, when they're giving you more money back on a, on a you know, a 10-year bond versus a 30-year bond, I mean, that's, that doesn't make any sense right there, right? But the, the bond yields is just also just one, one indicator to look at. All right, guys, but if you guys have any other questions, I think I'm pretty much going to leave it there. Um, USD weakness, guys, okay? USD weakness is what I am looking for, but don't chase it right away from last week, okay? I, I, Euro USD is also at some highs. Maybe wait for a correction towards the weekly pivot point. That's what I'm going to wait for. Wait for a correction down towards the weekly pivot point. That's going to be a better, better place to buy, okay? Same thing with USD CAD, right? It should keep going lower, but maybe the, there may be a little bit of a correction higher before dropping lower, okay? So maybe wait for a little bit of a correction up to where the weekly pivot point is and then moving a little bit lower, all right? So USD weakness, pay attention to it, stay patient with it. I'm telling you guys, it's gonna make you a lot of money, okay? All right, guys, so I'm gonna end it there. Yeah, no problem, guys. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Um, if you guys have any other questions, go ahead and throw it in Telegram. I will definitely go ahead and get OBS fixed before next week. It's just not, for some reason, the new Mac update is just not working with it, so I'll make sure I get that fixed. That way I can stream on YouTube for next week and everything will be back to normal. But other than that, guys, um, you know, I'll post what I can in Telegram for you guys and students, I will see all of you guys tomorrow on our weekly or our daily webinar and in discord so take care guys see you guys later